So what if your thyroid slows down a bit, you know, doesn't produce as much T3, which by the way is later converted to T4. The idea is this, you're under stress. What's the natural inclination to rest, to recover, to hibernate in a sense? And to do that, we have to slow down the thyroid. If you go to a certain AI or Wikipedia or something, you're going to be told that hypothyroidism mean is telling you that your thyroid isn't producing thyroid hormone. And it's not at the same level, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually doing what it's instructed to do on purpose. Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. Hey, friend. Welcome back to another episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm Jen Trepic, your host and health coach here with you every week. And today's guest is a bit of a celebrity in wellness practitioner circles, I must say. So I'm truly honored to have him here with us. Let me introduce you. He's board-certified holistic health practitioner and certified nutritional therapist. Truly an expert in functional lab testing and holistic lifestyle medicine, he's the founder of Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, FDN, and the FDN certification course with over 4,000 graduates in 50 countries. He served as the health director at a wellness center in Southern California for over 10 years and with over 10,000 patients, is known as one of the most experienced clinicians in his field. He serves on the advisory board of the American Natural Wellness Coaches Board and the American Association of Natural Wellness Coaches. He's also one of the authors of The Gap, Simple Steps to Reclaim Your Health and Reverse Most Chronic Diseases. The book is The Missing Link, the piece of the puzzle that holds the answers you've been searching for, the gap between chronic disease and your true recovery. Originally from Canada, he lives in the U.S. now. When not teaching the FDN certification course and helping his graduates build their private practices, he's usually found gardening or riding motorcycles. Today, he's joining us here on Salad with a Side of Fries. So without further ado, I give you Reed Davis. (laughs) Thank you so much. It's so great to be here, Jen. I hope we can help some people. I certainly will do my very best. And thank you again for having me here. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to have you. It's truly an honor, as I said. And that's the mission, right? To help people. That's why we're here. So we're going to give it our best go with focusing on the thyroid today. What do you say? Okay. Yeah. Anything you want to talk about. Thyroid is a good place, depending on the person and their goals. Yeah. And how their body's working. Awesome. All right. So we'll start with your story and then we'll dig deeper into lab testing and the thyroid and all that good stuff. But first, let's tell our members what they're getting this week. So members, since it's officially November, your recipe this week is to help you have your healthiest holidays. So your recipe is for a healthy sweet potato casserole. It is absolutely delicious. I know, Reed, I saw your face. <laughs> yeah. Um. It doesn't have the marshmallows, so, you know, maybe warm your family on that one. But I think everybody at your Thanksgiving table is going to like this one better. So it's delicious. Got some nuts and seeds in there. Yeah. I always thought the marshmallows ruined it. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Like, who wants candy on their vegetables? Right. Exactly. So if you want the recipe for this healthier sweet potato casserole, make sure you're a member. Go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. For just $10 a month, you get weekly recipes, a monthly article or tool, extra discounts from me and our partners, plus access to live Q&A sessions. It's a total deal. Really, when you take advantage of the full offerings, you're going to save far more than that $10 cost. It really is a no-brainer way to show yourself that your health is a priority. Plus, being a member supports this podcast and this community so that we can continue to do this with you every week. So remember, you're going to go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries or forget remembering the whole thing. Just click the link in the show notes because that's easier. Okay. Once you're there, you click support now, enter your email and payment info, click subscribe, and you're all set. You'll get this week's recipe for the healthy sweet potato casserole. Okay, Reed. So Tell us your story, because you started as an environmental paralegal, (laughs) right? So how did that bring you to the world of wellness and nutrition and then creating the FDN? Thanks so much. You know, I really enjoyed my career in environmental law. I went back to school in my 40s and uh, completed some post-grad that I always wanted to do. 
and I went right to work in the field and I was having a lot of fun actually saving the whole planet, you know, air, birds, water, trees, bees. And, and then I just started to turn my attention as I was getting older in the late 90s to what about people? What about us? And what about me? I was really healthy, but I didn't want anything sneaking up on me. You know, you hear stories. He was perfectly fine until that heart attack came along. Until, <laughs> right. So I just changed gears. I went to work. Actually, my, my son was a high school athlete back then, very exceptional student athlete. And, you know, he was seeing a chiropractor. And I started listening into the sessions and the philosophy. And I just kind of wanted to do that instead. I changed jobs. And so I went to work there in the clinic. And I just had an amazing opportunity. So I went from saving the planet to saving people, I guess you might say. The thing is, though, I didn't have much experience or I've always said I had a lot to learn, but I had nothing to unlearn. So I was kind of this clean slate of what's really wrong with people. Because people coming in the office, I noticed, and you mentioned my motorcycle, I, I ride a lot. It gives me a chance to be out in the, in the fresh air and undistracted thinking, you know, other than cars going by. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dangerous things like that. No, you just, I've been writing for 55 years. So I'm out there and just really contemplating what's going on back at the office, Jen. And I couldn't believe the stories I was hearing. People had been to five, six, eight, ten 10 different practitioners and weren't better yet. I thought, well, that's not right. That's kind of a ripoff or something. I didn't really understand what was going on. I'd never really seen a physician except for always, you know, sports injuries, motorcycle accidents, and maybe some dental work. So no chronic ill, nothing. So I didn't know what that was like. And I kind of bought into the story that the patients were telling me that, oh, their doctor doesn't know what he or she is doing, you know, and I've got this problem. And the doctors, according to the patients, were saying nothing was wrong with them. So they'd been to the doctor, they've been told your blood work looks normal, and yet they're suffering, they're chronic fatigue. And you name it, all these different, hear it all whatever the time. it is. Yeah, so we hear this a lot. So, so I thought, yeah, they must be full of crap. And I was wrong. And I found out soon enough later that these people just were looking in the wrong place. I like to say now that they had their ladder on the wrong wall. Uh, it's a term I got from Stephen Covey, or a hero of mine and a mentor. And I started saying that. And they would say, well, where's the wall? What, what do I do? And I didn't really know. I started running lab work to find out. And oh, by the way, the um, the owner of the clinic was getting her diplomat in nutrition, said I could go along and get my certificate in nutritional therapy and work on the patients in between classes. Now, no one gets that opportunity, hardly. So I jumped on it. And what I noticed right away is I fell in love with the clinical side of this space, this field. You know, wow, working with people is really cool and rewarding because I've done some things in the law program and I was able to transfer some of those skills like research, writing, things like that, like really digging into the theory and all kinds of cool stuff. So I, I just said to Mr. Smith or Mrs. Jones or whoever the heck it was, hey, I don't, I don't know much, but I'm going to find out what's wrong. We're going to yeah, find yeah. out what's wrong. And I was out riding my bike one day and I said, you know what? I'm going to be the last practitioner they need to see. We're going to stop the cycle of trial and error. It's another kind of a phrase that yeah. I kind of said, you know, used a lot. The cycle of trial and error has to end. And I'm going to be the guy that does it. So I could sort of fast forward 10 years because I spent 10 years in that clinic trying to help people, running labs and labs and labs and labs and labs. And it turns out, I didn't know this, that I was running more labs than any five doctors put together, according to, to one of the labs. Like, who the hell are you and how do you get this much lab work? You know, and I don't know. I just like doing it and we have lots of customers. And I was also pretty good at getting new ones <laughs> because I love to lecture. I love to go out and speak. And man, I found my path. I found what I wanted to do the rest of my life was help people. And I could do it. And we started having great success. Like, I started running labs. And people were, oh, my God, how come no one else ever showed me this before? And so over this 10-year period, I started recognizing patterns. And I came up with like a system 
Well, we're going to look at your hormones, your immune system, digestion, detoxification, energy production, the nervous system. Because I'm not a physician, and it's a good thing I wasn't. I had even physicians tell me, you're lucky you're not a physician because we can't do all that. We, we, you know, we're bound by all kinds of things, especially insurance billing and stuff. So right. I, I was had a cash practice. So if people were willing to you know, invest, they could get this very alternative. Now it's called functional medicine lab work done. And I got really good at it. I got really good at recognizing these patterns. And so I started to get pretty confident. Not only that, last thing here in the background is that I couldn't write a prescription. That's a good thing. Right. And even though I've been trained in supplementation in my nutritional therapy course, I didn't like doing that. I didn't just like just, oh, here, buy this stuff and see if it helps, you know. No, I needed to know if it was going to help or not. So what I noticed was that the more instructions I gave them for lifestyle things at home, the better off they did. Next time they came in for their chiropractic or acupuncture or whatever it was, they're coming in the office. I said, coming in the office is great. It's what you do at home that's going to make the biggest difference exactly. in your life. What you so, do between visits. Yeah. So And that became my D-R-E-S-S or dress for health success, which is diet rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation. And you've heard of those things, but this is all guided by the lab work. So I looked at that H-I-D-D-E-N, the hormone immune digestion detoxification and so on, those, this constellation of healing opportunities, and then applied the general principles of health building in the DRESS program. And that took, you know, just about 10 years to figure it out. And finally, it dawned on me and people were kind of bugging me. <laughs> to start teaching, they wanted to do it too. But um, think of how many people I could help if I would deputize others to do the program. And that, and that's when I started teaching. I've never looked back. That was 2008. So it's been a long time. And we've also learned a lot since, but the system works. And pretty much everyone that comes to me has a health problem. They want to get rid of it. They think they've tried everything. And in some cases, been told nothing's wrong with you, or they've been given medication or, or surgery. You know, like, oh, let's just cut the parts out. <laughs> well, <Right. laughs> people, right. you don't have extra parts. And I hope you're listening because you don't have extra parts. Absolutely. And there's so much in here because I think a lot of what I learned, I started health coaching, it was late 2007. So I know it's been a while, right? Yeah. And you're old. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, look at, and look at what you're looking I, at here. Right, exactly. But I remember learning about the FDN program. I worked with an FDN myself in, it was probably 2015. And yeah. it's so enlightening when you see finally, I think, the lab work confirm what you've been experiencing. Oh, right? yeah. Right? So before we get to, you know, dress and all that stuff, because we'll talk through some of that more. Can we speak to a little bit about the labs that you're looking at and how we can see what I'm experiencing or what someone's experiencing in your lab work, but their doctor maybe isn't or can't? Sure. Well, you can see it. Matter of fact, there's an expression I've been using. It's making the invisible visible. Yep. Because people have been to the doctor and nothing to look at here. You know, take a chill pill. I got some stories that would give you chills of what people were told. And so we look at these functional markers using saliva and urine and stool and some blood, but even hair. Your body will tell you things. It will give you data. So when you see it, exactly what you just said, you implied that people would go, wow, I really can see it. You can see it. This, these healing opportunities, hormone, immune, digestion, and so on. And there's something wrong. Look, this isn't functional. This is not correct. So you know, you pretty much have lived yourself into it. So let's live yourself out of it. And then we're, we're, that's what we're there to guide people on. And so, yeah, there's no medical diagnosis or treatment of a specific thing. No treatment, no drugs, no prescription or anything. Certainly no surgery. Unless you needed it. You know, that's what doctors are for. But, totally. Um, yes, yeah, so we don't think you have extra parts. Try to save them if we can. <laughs> And you get to be in control. You get to be the boss of your own body. Which is unbelievably empowering. 
right? Because I think so often, especially by the time people are getting to the place where they're coming to you or they're coming to me, they feel like they've tried everything, that they're just yeah. fighting their body at every turn, you know? And really, yeah. it's like we want to work with the body. Right. Well, you have to start with, and this is, I was thankful that I did learn very early on. I said I had a lot to learn, nothing to unlearn. The first thing I learned is the body wants to be healthy. You have an innate intelligence in every cell, all the tissues and organs and systems and entire organism wants to be healthy. It wants to survive. And so that's a innate power, if you will, or, uh, uh, the nature of it. So sometimes we just encourage that along, you know, and other forms of medicine kind of forget that sometimes they want to always intervene, intervene, intervene. And if you need intervention, that's not a bad thing. But this idea of um, making the invisible visible on paper, you could see this whole constellation of healing opportunities. And you know the word, it's clinical correlation. It correlates with how that person's feeling. So if you know something's wrong and you've been told, oh, nothing to see on this blood panel, there's other tests. That's what I'll tell you. Yeah. So let's talk about that for a second. And going specifically to thyroid, because I think... Typically, doctors look at TSH, right? Thyroid stimulating hormone. There's also T4 and T3, which sometimes they'll test for, sometimes they won't. Will you talk through even understanding what each of these things is telling us and maybe how you would look at that lab result versus how their typical practitioner might look at it? Sure. I'll give you the big picture because it's a lot of fun to go into the, the numbers and the nitty gritty of you know, T3, T4, reverse T3, T3 uptake, and the thyroid stimulating hormone, and, and all these things that come into play, they're all parts of the puzzle. But the main one is that thyroid is an organ, and it pretty much does what it's told by the hypothalamus pituitary. So it's part of this axis, the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid. And if you're under a lot of stress, this thyroid is going to be told, conserve. Remember, everything wants to survive, and, and it's all about sometimes just conserving resources. So what if your thyroid slows down a bit, you know, doesn't produce as much T3, which, by the way, is later converted to T4. There's all these things involved, and it's a lot of fun for me as a, as a researcher to, to go through it, but I don't want to have your audience fall asleep. So <laughs> the idea is this. You're under stress. What's the natural inclination to rest, to recover? to hibernate in a sense. And to do that, we have to slow down the thyroid. If you go to a certain AI or Wikipedia or something, you're going to be told that hypothyroidism mean, is telling you that your thyroid isn't producing thyroid hormone. And it's not at the same level, as it used to, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually doing what it's instructed to do on purpose. Right. So you'd gain a few pounds and, you know, you might feel a little sad and, you, you know, because it's hibernation. It's like winter, you know, and you could get constipated very easily, and it gets worse from there. The hair thinning and the numb or cold, at least, or numb extremities and lots of things. So what physicians do is they listen to your complaints. That's good. But then they guess. Hopefully. Well, you hope they're listening. And so what they say all the time is it sounds like even functional medicine doctors do this because they're trained. They're trained to listen and it sounds like thyroid or it sounds like irritable bowel, or it sounds like chronic fatigue, or it sounds like something. So they run that test. God forbid, guess what? They find low thyroid. Naturally, because of course, this person's under stress, their body's trying to conserve and hide. So yep, pat myself on the back, found your problem. It's low thyroid. Here's your thyroid hormone. Nothing gets fixed. You're not changing anything. You're not really looking upstream for all the causal factors or any of that stuff. So you get, I don't know, 25, 30 million people, mostly women, are on thyroid med, but there's really nothing wrong with their thyroid. Not to say there aren't conditions. Thyroid can go bad. The thyroid can get autoimmune and lots of things. But in, yeah, I, I would venture to say probably eight out of 10 cases, it's natural, normal outcome, normal outflow of this stressful world we live in. You've heard that word stress before, right? Right. <laughs> Maybe once or twice, right? <laughs> You know, we all have it, but, and that's another big part of our dress program. We, we sort that out. What, where is it? Where is it happening? Can we get the thyroid to just start doing like it's supposed to? Yeah. So 
digging a little bit further, right? So we have these symptoms. Oftentimes, practitioners are testing to the symptoms. Sounds what like. What I'm hearing you say, yeah. right, this sounds like. And what I'm hearing you say is, We can test to get confirmation of that, but that doesn't necessarily tell us why that's the case. And then you often run extra labs, right? That's the exciting part is I don't want to use it sounds like, and then just they end up with another diagnosis and another treatment plan and another medication or, you know, and there's supplements that help thyroid production as well. There are very rare cases when it is nutrition, you know, you can have a tyrosine deficiency or an iodine deficiency, but they're pretty darn rare. Those are required to make thyroid hormone. But I don't know that I've seen more than one or two cases like that out of thousands. So the next thing that happens, see what happens is (laughs) symptoms might even abate a little bit. You might feel a little bit more energy. You might, you know, lose a couple pounds, but there's something else still bothering you because you haven't really gone upstream and fixed things. So let's say it's low libido. Now, this is a really common thing in the same body of patients, you know, the same demographic, if you want, 40 to 60-year-old women who, you know, need to lose a few pounds and have some more energy and sleep better and have more libido. they sort of feeling all fatigued out and stuff. And, oh, well, that sounds like testosterone. And so... Test the test. Yep, sure enough, pat myself on the back some more. I found, I sound, here's another. So it could be called a, called a causal factor. It's the cause of your symptoms. It isn't really what's wrong. It's, you're not going far enough upstream. And what does that mean? Another prescription. Now you're on thyroid medication and testosterone. And God knows what's next, right? So it's really just another cycle of trial and error. So using lab work, but it's standard traditional mentality. So the answer to your question is, We don't start with the thyroid. We start with the stress hormones. We start with what happens, you know, the hormones, the immune system, what's going on with secretory IgA in the gut, what's going on with digestion. Are you actually breaking down and absorbing all that expensive food you're eating, organic and all this stuff? And what about detoxification? You know, is your liver really clean and and purifying everything it's supposed to? Liver is a big reflection upon the other detoxing organs, the kidney, the lymph, the uh, colon. Uh, the lungs even. The skin itself is the the biggest organ you have, and it does a lot of detoxifying. Anyway, so there's all this, again, there's this whole constellation of healing opportunities, and we'd look at all of them. So what if your thyroid's a little low? Let's see if we can't just get you all straightened out and have it come back. And if you're really suffering, there are natural things you can use instead of medication, which could have all kinds of side effects. So generally, that's how we look at thyroid. It's just one of the pieces of the puzzle that it's their secondary thyroid. There's even what they call tertiary, which is it's actually third in line. It's it's mm-hmm. it'll fix itself. You get the adrenals and the sex hormones and all these things balanced out, get the immune system back in shape. It could be overactive, it could be underactive, and on and on. I can keep going because it's so much fun. Yeah, and I hope what everybody's hearing too are all the things that we've talked about in episodes of this show and dug into, right, all of these elements. But really quick, before we shift into addressing everything through dress, right, we often talk, okay, so we want to test for other hormones and, you know, cortisol and those kinds of things. I'm a big fan of saliva testing for cortisol, sure, right? And, you know, stool testing and all those kinds of things. How can we help people get a better sense of the best tools as far as the labs go to look at these elements. Yeah, you know, I don't like to use the word best. I just say preferred because it gives us the data that we need. See, we're not looking to diagnose and treat something specific to put a label, you know, bill the insurance company. Okay, here's the prescription. Call it in, get it filled. Don't take it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Most people don't take their medication. But So it's very frustrating for the doctors too. But, you know, we think you've lived yourself into that problem. The environment and your lifestyle caused most of it. It's not an infectious disease that you have, that you caught from neighbor, toilet seat or whatever. I don't know. So those are the kind of markers we look for. They're healing opportunities and they require some work. So we send people home with instructions. Again, back to when I was a patient educator in the clinic for 10 years. 
you know, how's your diet? You know, we sorted that out so that we get the right one for that individual. Everybody for us at Genial Love This becomes a study of one. There's no study of 50,000 people. I'm not one of them. I'm me. You know, I'm different. And what you do for that group could either maybe make you feel better, maybe do nothing, or maybe make you worse. So everybody's a study of one. I lost track of what you asked me, but. (laughs) No, this is perfect. It's all interesting because the question was really about preferred testing for some of these other elements. But where you're going now is with dress, right? And how we can really address what somebody's experiencing. So let's shift into that really quick, though. Let me do a break for our partner for this episode. Okay. All right. Big thanks to DNA Miracles for supporting Salad with a Side of Fries, because every child is a miracle. DNA Miracles provides the highest quality body and wellness products designed for babies, children, and expectant mothers. All products are gentle, easy to use, and 100% effective when used as directed. DNA Miracles partner with leading health professionals and scientists who follow the highest standards in ingredient selection to create the most effective skin, hair, and health solutions. As natural as possible, DNA Miracles is the best and safest option on the market for you and your little miracle. From expert pediatricians to real family testimonials, everyone has fallen in love with DNA Miracles. So as we talk about today, connecting the dots in our wellness, looking at the big picture, we can do that with our kids too. And the first piece is, right? (laughs) The first piece though is filling in the gaps where their food falls short and our food supply falls short. So you can start with one of the multivitamin options for just $16.95 for 30 servings. And the DNA Miracles Multivitamin Plus was formulated to support the needs of children who require particular nutritional support in the areas of digestive, neurological, and metabolic health. It provides a carefully selected blend of vitamins and minerals chosen for their exceptional bioavailability. And it's important, right? The ingredients are more rapidly absorbed and better utilized by the body, giving your child the nutrients they need when they need them. And of course, there's also the DNA Miracles Essential Omega-3. This one's $39.95. It also tastes delicious. It is an orange creamsicle flavor. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Your kids will yeah. actually enjoy had, having an yeah. omega-3. <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. And yeah, so here's what I know. Your kids are worth the dollar a day that it might take to support their health of the littles in your life. And that's before your 10% off and free shipping for being a salad with a side of fries listener. So simply text the word miracles, M-I-R-A-C-L-E-S, to 844-947-4846. You'll receive the link and coupon code right to your phone. Again, simply text the word miracles, M-I-R-A-C-L-E-S, to 844-947-4846. This is a toll-free number. Standard text and data rates may apply. Reed, you were going to say something. I was going to say about the omega-3s, you know, we're all upside down in this country. Our omega-6 to 3 ratio is way off. It causes all kinds of health problems down the road. And this is another idea of making the invisible visible because you can get your omega-6 to 3 ratio checked through a blood test and go, wow, I'm way upside down. I'm going to get cardiovascular disease and God knows what else. You know what I'm saying? Like as you age, you can age gracefully or quite ungracefully, you might say. And so, right. and you, why not start as a kid? Why not get that right? Because omega-3s have been bred out of the food, you know, beef just doesn't have it like it used to because they don't feed the way they were design, yep. all kinds of things. So this omega-63 ratio is very important. So augmenting your mate, that creamsicle flavor, and I've had it, it's really good. Um, it is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we prefer to try to get things from diet if possible. Yes. But they're not, I mean, it's been bred out of the beef, you know, unless you're eating expensive grass-fed beef all the time, you're going to be uh, short. And it could take years to turn that ratio around, by the way. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, again, it, you lived yourself into it, you have to right. live yourself out of it. I'm prepping in a couple of weeks. I'm leading a training, the supplementation training in New Rochelle, New York. And so some of the latest research is the ratios right now are like 20 to 40 to one. Yep. Yep. Six is to three, which is, yeah. 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 For sure. And so I got to tell you, because kids are so much fun to work with. I know it's a a digression of sorts, but they're so much fun to work with because they respond so quickly. And um, parents are, they're more inclined to to invest in their kids than themselves, that's a little frustrating. 
because I think the parents need to be setting the example. You know, hey, the lady come in and you got to help my kids. And she has this big soda in her hand. You know, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I could help them a lot. <laughs> you go look right. in the mirror. But anyway. Well, so, so, well, actually, but that brings up a question that I want to ask you. And that is knowing everything you know, but we still live in this modern world, right? And you were just saying like all the grass fed beef is really expensive. So yeah. how do you, in your own life, Balance everything you know with the reality of, you know, functioning in the real world. Yeah, just thank goodness for my wife because she keeps me more or less on the straight and narrow because I would be a glutton otherwise. You know, I, I love fried chicken wings. You know, I haven't had them in probably three or four years when I did some testing and found out I shouldn't. But I should have never have been eating the bread and the oil right. and things like that. But I haven't been to a fast food restaurant in well over 20 years just knowing how bad that stuff is. And the oils is a huge part of it. Let me give your audience something, a tip. Seed Oil Scout, S-O-S. If you haven't seen that app, you just go on your phone and look at your apps and go S-O-S, Seed Oil Scout, download that thing. Every restaurant you go to, pretty much, they're going to have judged it as to whether you could eat there safely or not. You know, dine cautiously, it'll say, or, you know, Go ahead and pig out. You know, it. it's all in there. <laughs> but I have to go back and say that this lady was coming in our office. This is over 20 years ago. And she asked me if I worked with kids. Well, yeah, I guess so. Why? You know, I, I was a football coach. I coached 15 years. I raised four kids. And yeah, why? What's up? Well, they want to put him on drugs. And they're saying he's a bad boy. And um, they they don't want, they want me to get him some medication. He was only nine years old. They want to wow. drug a nine-year-old? Why? For behavior? I got to tell you, we did some testing. We got the child sorted out. But I got a call a couple of weeks later from the principal of the school who said, Mr. Davis, you know, I tracked you down through the mom, and I just got to tell you, this is a different kid. He's paying attention. He's not outbursting, and he's not poking at the other kids, and he's a different kid. What'd you put him on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as if it was some magic pill. Now, now listen, right. nutrition is really important. And the things like the omega, they can be very helpful. But if you don't remove the neurotoxins and things that were, that this kid was eating crap and you wonder, and some are more sensitive than others. Yes. To, you know, you might have a boy and a girl, the boy's fine or the girl's fine. And the boy's, you know, being told go home or get on drugs. Anyway, um, it was quite interesting. He thought I was going to show him something. Right. Well, I said, no, what we put him on was a much better and healthier lifestyle and diet and, uh, and sleep patterns and, and all these different things. So I had to tell that. And I have so many stories like that. that would It's just what puts the joy in what we do. Absolutely. So let's talk through it. Right. Dress. Right. Diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplements. Walk us through what you mean by each of these, some, sure. you know, maybe high level guidelines for each. Sure. Well, the first thing that I was taught in my nutritional therapy course was the supplements. And we would do these questionnaires and you'd type it in the computer. And I barely even knew how to use a computer. You know, I was still sending out postcards <laughs> to get in touch with people. Imagine that. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, and then you'd offer them some supplements, sell them some supplements, and they might take them for a month and feel a little better. And then they'd, they'd say, okay, I'm fixed, you know, and quit taking them. Or they would take them for a month and maybe two months and say, I'm not feeling anything or even feeling worse. So they just quit taking them no matter what. So I knew it wasn't just supplements. We knew diet was very important, but which one? It took me a couple of years to figure out because back then, it was the Atkins diet was really popular. Oh, yeah. It was as popular as like paleo, you know, and it worked for me. I actually do very well on, on high meat and fat. But, man, some people just hated it. No, they felt terrible. And you know, so, okay, what do we do? So I found, discovered, you know, a way, metabolic typing, uh, as a way to get to the right diet for an individual. At least, you know, the macronutrient ratios and, and some other things. And then, of course, sleep. You know, and rest. And I realized that rest wasn't just sleep. Yeah, you have to sleep, but you can rest your 
your mind. Behind this screen, the reason that screen's there is because there's a day bed behind it that isn't made nice. up because I like taking my naps five minutes and I meditate. Sometimes I'll listen to some meditation and stuff and I'm resting my mind because, you know, running, I have 50 employees. I run a company and I need to be able to show up for you. You know, I might need to get away from whatever I was studying before. <laughs> and so I, I've learned to rest, not just sleep. So diet, rest, exercise kind of goes without saying, sitting is the smoking. But there's not one program that's right for everyone there either. So I have a, I have a gym. I like Pilates. It doesn't sound real manly to some people. Yet I was the strongest guy in the gym. And they would say, well, just keep doing what you're doing then. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause it, yeah, because the core strength is just incredible. Yep. You know. So diet, rest, exercise. Now, and this just kind of fell in place after working in the office for years. You just, what did I need to tell them to go home and do? And I like making up names, like dress is pretty cute, you know, D-R-E-S-S. You could put it in any order you want, but it spells dress. And the two S's are stress reduction and still spend a lot of time sorting out the different types of stress. And it's ridiculous how much stress we're under. We're not meant to be living like this. You know, the TV and the, so even the, radiation off this computer screen and things you know i put my glasses and i got my blue light glasses blue light. and things i put on after four o'clock it's only 220 right now but anyway so diet rest exercise stress reduction is big because it's not just mental emotional yeah that has an effect so does trauma my personal if i had to pick a stressor be the aches and pains from a well-used body the jujitsu the surfing the skiing the motorcycle accidents you know i can go on and so Last is the supplements. So they're now last, not for, you know, people want to grab, you know, and I have plenty, but I use them judiciously. And you mentioned, you know, spending the money on good food and, you know, what good is it and things. It's really good. What I do is I talk it over. We spend time on food prep. You know, that saves going out all the time. Although we still love to go out. It, now that we got that seed oil scout, it's hard to find a restaurant that doesn't have bad oils. They use cheap, even good restaurants. I know. They say dine shamefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's It's like dine cautiously or dine joyously, whatever it says. You know, but the worst one is that dine shamefully. Oh, God. And not only that, but you're probably spending 200 bucks on a meal, you know. So we just yeah. pay attention and know that the results sometimes are invisible. So cardiovascular disease is invisible. It sneaks up. So that's why we have this markers that we like to use to look at it and see. You know, David Perlmutter just came out with his latest book, Drop Acid, and he's talking about uric acid. Well, it's now it's a, it's a marker we've looked at for years, but only in terms of like gout, you know, and, and the uric acid crystals that might damage your kidneys or something like that. But it's much more insidious. There's new discoveries are that this is a individual risk factor for a lot of different diseases from brain diseases to the cardiovascular to the, the blood sugar things and it's so so we make the invisible visible by looking at these labs there's not only the labs we use to heal people to help them heal overcome a thing, but once you're now what okay i got rid of my hypothyroidism now what predictive markers you know to maintain a good lifestyle and you'll find that the benefits are worth the investment Every time. A hundred percent. Absolutely. And I think too, between the elements, you know, just as a reminder for everybody, diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplements. Yes, the supplements are now last, but it requires some attention to all of them. And just as with the lab work and our diagnoses and testing, we don't want to hyper focus on one thing. That also applies in the healing approach too, right? We have to sort of address all of the elements. Fantastic. That's a great observation because the medical model is to treat specifics. Well, we treat nothing specifically. We treat everything non-specifically. So that lifestyle that dress for health success has an effect, a beneficial, good effect on every cell, tissue, organ, system. The entire organism is lifted by behaving oneself, at least most of the time. Right. <laughs> Awesome. So before we get to our rapid fire, 
Two quick questions. Sure. One is anything that we missed or any key takeaway for everybody on the thyroid element? Oh, uh, yeah. Get it checked. If you have the symptoms, it's okay to get checked. Listen, I never say don't go to doctors. I, I don't know if I cleaned it up in the beginning when I talked about the people who are coming in thought their doctors sucked. And what I found out later is, well, they're just, they just don't do what we do. They do right. what they do really well. So if you have a long-term chronic downward spiraling condition that's been going on for a long time, then you need to get your ladder on the self-care wall because the medical wall is drugs and surgery, you know, and you might be told nothing's wrong with you yet. So it's not the, it, you know, we love uh, the physicians, the fact that when that downward spiral is really contracted, that's what they're good for. You know, the observations I make can't be capitalized on. We need time to heal the body. So there's, it works together really well. And I saw that alternative medicine that we were providing became complementary. Complementary became integrative. Integrative has kind of become functional or lifestyle medicine, and it all works. But what I teach is how to get in control yourself. You know, and, and of course, as health coaches and lifestyle coaches, we want to empower the people. Absolutely. All right, last question. You've done a lot of these interviews. You do them all the time. What's something or is there something that you rarely get to talk about or that you haven't talked about that you, you want a minute or two for? You know, it's it's happening more and more lately is the, the mindset stuff, you know, just really being at peace and not getting stressed out. And I don't suppress my emotions. I just try not to let it go that far. You know, I think about things like everyone else. And sometimes this thought, if you think about something long enough, it's going to invoke a feeling. You're going to get angry or sad or whatever the heck it is. The emotion of joy and happiness is to be cultured. So it's more about culturing that. It starts with getting up in the morning. You know, I come downstairs. I, yes, I put on a, uh, the coffee thing, but I'll get in my sauna for 15 minutes, sometimes sometimes 10, try to go for 20, but get a good you know, sweat. Then I get my coffee and I walk around my yard. I, I have five acres of land and I... I'm always doing something fun and looking at the birds. And, you know, I live out in the country. I don't have city air. So I take that time and I don't get to talk about that much. Maybe no one cares. But I think that that's your lifestyle matters. And, and only you should be controlling. Get up an hour earlier. Oh, I can't. You know, I hear I can. I get up at six and I have to go right to work. No, you can get up at five. You can go to bed earlier and you can get up earlier. That's my admonition. My dad said, early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. <laughs> All right. I think that's the perfect segue right, <laughs> to our rapid fire off topic questions. All right. So with that, what's the best thing you've done for your health this week? What's the naughtiest thing you've done related to your health this week? Oh, man. Well, just exercising outdoors, I think it's the best thing. The time I spend with my wife and intimacy is very important to us and things like that physically, you know, and emotionally too. And we go to church on Sunday or we watch it on TV. We're kind of addicted to that. It's kind of sounds funny maybe. But then the other day at dinner, I ate something that wasn't, you know, it was one of those ex sort of, well, I'm going to order it and see. And it was, it was really gooey, you know, and Probably not good for me at all. I had to take extra enzymes and some wheat yes. some wheat rescue, you know, and stuff like that. I've been there. All right. If you weren't the creator of FDN and a pioneer in wellness, what would you do? Yeah, I've thought about that. I probably would buy land and build it up. I, I'd be a builder. I, I'd like to create a ranch, have a retreat center, that kind of a thing. I've thought about having a supplement company and really making some good the problem is everything I, I would pick would be really expensive. So I don't know how that would market. But like this, you could see this here. See this? It says read because it's uh -huh. an experience. I now hired it's in a special bottle. The bottle alone is like an empty bottle is more expensive than the rest. And just the light and the whole, you know, I'm just really learning a lot. So I hired one of the maybe the world's leading herbalist. And there's some things in that you have to source it. We're using black maca from, it has to be grown above 8,000 feet. So you got to buy it in uh, Peru, you know, and things like that. And some other yep. stuff going in there. So I'm experimenting with that. Fun. All right. Your favorite book on any topic 
other than your area of expertise, or you could give us a fiction book too. Yeah, well, I've read all of the, or most of the James Mitzner novels on his, their historical novels. Those are fascinating. The problem is they're 3,000 pages long each. It's been a while since I read one, but I kind of read them all and learned a lot about world them. history. And uh, then I like pirate books and pirate stories. I don't know why. Yeah. All right. If you could cure one ailment, disease, or sickness, what would it be? It probably somewhere between, you know, Alzheimer's and cancer, you know, something. I mean, those are the ones that just devastate more than just the person because they affect so many people around that person. Thank God my mom's 93 and still cranking along. It's unbelievable with no major diseases, you know, so I keep, nothing to fix there really, just some old age. But, you know, I asked her, she was here visiting me. She lives back in Ohio. I'm in San Diego. She'll come out for two, three weeks at a time. And we love having her, but she was on the sofa and doing good, you know? And, and I said, mom, you know, you could, she's 93. You could probably live to be a hundred. She goes, what makes you think I want to? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was so cute. You know, she's a little it cute is. old English lady. That's awesome. If you were a superhero, what would be your superpower? Oh, man. Flying. I think flying would be great. The the strength and stuff. Probably used to be x-ray vision, but I don't care about that anymore. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> What's your biggest pet peeve? I think it's something people do. You know, I don't like whining. I can't stand a whiner. You know, you bring me solutions. Don't bring me problems. That's what I, I would think it was that. There's probably other things. You know, no one likes a liar. But I think, you know, just the whining. Ugh. All right, last one. In your opinion, what's the next frontier in wellness? Great question. Well, I think it's how to get people to learn to live together in healthy ways. And I think it's there's got to be some kind of a revolution in terms of those that would have monopolies. So there are those that would have monopolies if we let them and we can't let them, you know, and so they're very avaricious and they don't want the best for you. So I think there's something along the lines of information being good, intelligence gathering and dissemination. But, you know, things are getting shut down. You know, yeah. it, it's kind of crazy. I, I think there's a revolution in that area. Excellent. Well, we thank you again for being here, sharing all of your insights and knowledge with us. Tell everybody how to connect with you, where to learn more. And you have a freebie for everybody. Yes. Yeah, so if people want, they could go to fdntraining.com slash salad. So FDN, that's what we do, functional diagnostic nutrition. I couldn't think of a longer name. Kidding. Right. So we call it fdntraining.com slash salad. And that's where you'll get our free gift to you. Excellent. Yes. And it's a walk you through the dress approach. So thank you again. Appreciate your time. And my pleasure. Really, truly. Jen, you keep up the amazing, great work that you're doing. The fact that you have sponsors and things, that's important. So folks, you know, you patronize Jen's sponsors because they help keep this great information coming. That's what I just said. We need the information to keep coming. Yeah. Thank you so much. So friends, on Friday, our Nutrition Nugget, we're talking about music. So what's the power of music, not just when it comes to our workouts, but really for brain health? So I have it, right? I know. So tune in on Friday. We're going to talk all about music for brain health. Wherever you're listening now, click the plus sign or follow, and then your app will alert you when the Nutrition Nugget goes live. As always, everybody, I'm your host, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or all social media. I am at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Website is a salad with a side of fries.com. Pick your platform, send a message. I want to hear from you, your questions, your ideas, your takeaways. Let us know how we can better support you. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me as your health coach. Reed Davis, thank you again for being here. Thank you very much, Jen. I much appreciate it. Likewise. And friend, if you are not already a member, join our membership program by going to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. This shows your support for this podcast, this community, and most importantly, supports your health. You'll get this week's recipe for the healthy sweet potato casserole. 
So until next week, and really always, remember the entire body is connected. Specialists can be helpful, but our optimal health requires a truly holistic lifestyle approach. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform, share us with a friend, and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.